Hey guys, I'm Faze at AK Sonic, and today I'm going to show you how to use a video broadcast, how to give your camera a background blur, and how to do more with your camera, even if you have a webcam just like me, to make your stream look better and more professional. Here we go, let's go straight into it. So, what I want to show you guys today is NVIDIA Broadcast. What does it do? What are the features it has besides webcam utility and how to use it into your stream? So, let's open our software up right now. A good note for this is you need to have an NVIDIA card of the 20 series or the 30 series. So, a 2060, 2070, etc. or a 3060, 3070, 3080, 3090. Otherwise, this does not work. It does not work with 10 series cards and it does not work with AMD cards since it's an NVIDIA program. So, keep that in mind. Let's, uh, let's go straight in the, into the tutorial. Here we go. So as you can see right now, I have NVIDIA broadcast open and you see three different things mentioned. Microphone, speakers, and camera. We're going to discuss two of them, but mostly it's going to be the camera part. Speaker part is just, I, I don't have the experience with it. I'm not using it myself, so I can't give you details about it. So let's quickly show you what microphone can do for your stream. And then we go to the camera side and, and highlight how you can use that for your streams to put your streams to a higher level. So what can a microphone setting do for you? You select your mic in the drop down menu. Mine is microphone USB audio codec because I have an audio interface um, with USB, uh, through USB on my PC using an XLR mic. And you have the effect noise removal right here. It's the only option you have. You can put it on. And right now it wouldn't, you won't hear a difference as I'm recording straight towards my program um, Streamlabs OBS to record this. But if you select this sound path in your Streamlabs OBS, and I will show you how to do it in a second, you will get this program to do some work for you. Basically, every background noise you make, ticking on your desk, clicking on your keyboard, even someone knocking on your walls, someone low, uh, someone mowing the lawn in the background, someone vacuum cleaning, those sounds are literally getting filtered out while you speak without changing your voice too much. So it's actually... It's a really impressive piece of software because it's a software based processor basically that cancels out background noise even when you speak without changing your voice basically at all. It changes your voice just a tiny bit. Um, I don't use it myself since my mic has a building compressor and background remover etc. So I don't need to worry about it. But for people that use a headset mic or USB mic, this is a great utility. I've used it for I think a, ma a month or four and it's great. You have barely no background noise. Even Discord is it's usable in Discord. It's usable in your streams. It's usable in your recordings on, on OBS. Uh, and I will show you directly now how to do it. So let's just quickly jump into streams OBS or, or OBS itself. They both work the same. And uh, show you how to add this sound path to your recording program or stream program. Here we go. So once you've opened your OBS or your streams OBS, you go to settings. You go to audio. And you go to your mic. I will keep this one selected so you can still hear me. But you will go to Mic Auxiliary Device 2. Click on the thing and then click on Microphone and Video Broadcast. As soon as you selected this one, the microphone will be heard through the so software of NVIDIA Broadcast and the fills will be applied. Make sure to uh, swap the slider in and out just a, just a bit and see how harsh it is on your voice. You can do this by listening back to your voice by selecting it on monitoring uh only or a mute and a mute output this will show you your voice in your headset or make recording with a different settings you can also do it through here but this one isn't as clear in my opinion so try to do it through your recording software itself it's a bit more easy to use and a bit more clear in my opinion but we continue to the rest how to use the camera software in your streamlabs obs in your obs or if you're using xplay this should also work if i'm correctly memorizing that don't keep me counting on that one right now i'm using it already you can see my background is, is basically a bit blurred um and i am still in focus how to do it is rather easy you click on camera it's still in beta um but it, it's still a great software they just updated it so you have these settings here as well for your camera these ones are not safe to your camera itself i believe but i'm not 100 percent sure on that one uh i haven't tested it to be quite fair with you but how does it work? You select your camera in here. I have the HD Pro webcam CNN20. It's a good webcam, but it's still a webcam. It's not a camera, so it doesn't have a lot of depth of field. And we're kind of basically creating that with this software. Right now, it's on extremely low, but I can show you how it looks like without it on. It's a bit more sharp in the background. Put it on. It's a little bit more there. And you can make it as sharp as you want. Right now, I am completely in focus, but my background is blurred. Keep in mind, 
my hands will also be a bit blurred and if you have something like a teddy bear on your mic arm it can be a bit weird so keep that in mind that's why i have it rather low i always have it around this one or the lowest setting uh you have two options here as well quality and performance it might differ on your side but on my side the quality doesn't make a difference really on quality side it sometimes captures me a bit better but the other times performance captures me a bit better it just depends on the lighting i have on my room normally i have some lighting in the background as well so in that regards it often works better the performance side, I don't really feel a difference FPS-wise, like how much it uses on my, C my, my PC, my CPU, GPU, and how much it, it like takes away from FPS in-game. I don't see the difference. Uh, I might just have a decent PC in that regards. If you have a lower MPC, PC, it might, might differ a bit more. Test it out and see what works the best for you. But nevertheless, we have more settings. And this is the thing I like the most about this, because you can use it to your own utility. Right now, I can wave to myself, by the way. How you doing, Serenic? Um, but you have the background blur. And that's what I always use in my intermissions. When I go into my full screen like this, I always have the blur in the background. So I'm just a bit more popping out of the screen. And of course, when you have a huge DSLR camera, you have that feature already. But if you don't have that feature, this is a nice, simple step to do so. But what are the other options you have? You have multiple options in there here. You have replacement, remove on auto frame. Replacement basically means you load a picture and it replaces it for you on your background, as you can see right now. And I will show you how it shows over here. You can see that you can just select a file and that file can then be, let's just pick something random. I think I have some weird pictures saved. Yeah, an animal in the background. It works. And right now, performance will look, this changes a bit. Uh, so you see that there's a small difference in quality and performance there. Uh, it also depends on how your lighting is. The better your lighting, the better it will capture you out. But I bar barely never use this except when I'm in like a Teams call or a Zoom's call for school. Uh, it's it's kind of fun to have this as my background while I have classes. Don't be like me. Teachers don't always like it. But that's a different story. Second step, you have the removal part. And that's basically a green screen. And right now, don't, don't focus on the teddy part. N n most people don't have this. So you won't see that pop up. For me, it picks it up sometimes because it's been seen as like skin tone. Um, but most people don't have this, so it will just capture you. And in my opinion, it works pretty pretty well. It realizes what is a person and what is not. And even performance, yet again, might work a little better for you. Like right now, you can see that the edges on me are way sharper with the performance and quality. Quality is a bit more blurry and buggy um, around your hand as well. And performance is a bit more stiffer, a bit, bit more, more sharp. So that can differ yet again on your side. Uh, but it's a great option to green screen yourself. Right now you can see it on, on here as well. I'm green screened in my camera frame. And if you want to have a more immersive experience in your stream when you're playing a certain role playing game or when you're playing like Red Dead Redemption or maybe even shooters because you don't like the huge border of your camera, this is a great option to try out before you might even buy an actual green screen. Because always an actual green screen with an actual camera is always better quality but to start out with, this is a great option to use. Last but not least, or well, yeah, last but not last but not least, you have auto frame. And auto frame is basically just if you move, the camera moves. I never use this, but it can be nice for some situations. It can be fun. It can be great. So that that's another great option. So that's also a thing. You can also use the zoom in. How you doing? There we go. So you can use that as well. But if you actually want to do a zoom in, you can just sometimes it doesn't zoom in, by the way. Um, but if you want to do a zoom in, just do it through OBS or Streamlabs OBS. Just zoom in your camera because otherwise you need to just drag the slider the whole time when you want to zoom in, which makes zero sense. Just make different sources uh, in your stream with a zoom in. Like I have, I have this one, I have this one, and then I have this one. I can zoom in on myself all the time if I want to, which I often do on my streams. It can be quite fun. Another fun feature, by the way, on the removal part is that if you want to be like me, you can have a party with yourself. Look party with myself you can just green screen yourself in like 15 times and i will show you how it looks on the streamers obs side i just have my camera here uh one two three like eight eight times i believe and I, you can just have a party with yourself i have a few gifts of like dancing lights around me and when i have music on i can party with my stream on the screen isn't that amazing and that's all possible. And it, it looks extremely sharp, to be fair. Only the teddy bear makes it a bit buggy sometimes. But if I take it off, I'm not going to because it's a harsh thing to get back in. But if I take it off, it's so clean. 
And I'm actually surprised how a software program that's still in beta, by the way, can do this. If you want to add this source into your stream into, as a webcam, you need to add it as a new video capture device. You can do this by clicking on the plus icon, clicking on video capture device, then add source, new, and then just call it webcam. We do webcam one for the six because I already have a webcam. And you click on this one and click on the camera and video broadcast and you're basically done. It will pop up. It will show. Um, I now have my camera here twice because I showed this, but this is how you do it. And this is how it works. If you want to tweak your camera a bit more, you can always, I'll delete this real quick. You can always do that by the settings over here. Um, change the brightness, change sh uh, saturation, sharpness, etc. But that's how you add it into streamless OBS and it's basically the same into normal OBS. If you learned anything new today or you like the video at all or whatever, and you want to see more tutorials by me about topics you want to know more about, leave them down in the comments, drop a like and subscribe if you haven't done it yet. And I hope to see you back in the next video or one of my Twitch streams. I'm almost basically live every single day around 8 p.m. Central European time. So you're always welcome to tune in on the stream. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Good luck with streaming and make your dreams come true. Bye bye.